right, so we learn about justice, okay? This is where we're going to, well, we're going to introduce it in real practical. I think I can click on that one. Um, there we go. And what I want, I'm really trying to help us understand is this. Who is responsible for justice in society? Everybody. See, I want you guys to really, really understand that, okay? See, policemen, okay? We tend to think policemen are responsible for justice, or politicians, whether it's the executive branch or, like, a, a, a president, or whether it's uh, legislators, like Congress and Senate, uh, or judges. See, those are who we think are responsible for justice. And do they have a role in justice in society? Yes. Yes, they do, okay? A different role than we do, okay? Uh, but the point I want us to understand is everybody plays a role, okay? That's why we need to understand what we are to do. And that's why I saw Micah 6, verse 8 says this, He has told you, O man, what is good, okay? What does the Lord require of you? So what's good? What does God require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And so the point is, guys, is all of us are to do justice. Now, that doesn't mean we all do it the same way. But we're all to do justice. So that's why we've been spending all this time. Now, I've really been laying out from Leviticus 5, verse, 11, uh, verse 1, that sometimes it's a sin not to speak up. Okay? That's a very clear passage, and that's why I thought it was the clearest to really emphasize. It says, if a person sins, what's the sin? Because he does not speak up when he hears a public charge to testify regarding something he has seen or learned, he will be held responsible. And so my point that I'm trying to emphasize is, is there's a responsibility to speak up at times. You see that? That's what I've been trying to drive. And the example I've given is if, if, if Brother Ben saw Timmy driving Weston's stolen Jeep out on Hard Slate Road like a maniac, right? Uh, that's the example. And the reason I did that example, okay, and, and I kind of said, Mr. Ben would have two Two, two choices. He can mind his own business, let Timmy live his life, right? Let him go, let him live. Not my problem. Or he can inform the police. And if you inform the police, what are some words that would describe people who inform police? Squealer. What did you call it? Squealer. Snitch. Okay? Weasel. Okay? Tattletale is probably the one you guys are most familiar with, okay? And I've tried to emphasize that. And so the uh, reason I've emphasized it that way is this. Mr. Ben, if he's like me, and like I dare say most adults in here, guess which one we're going to tend to want to do? Not in the place. Not my problem. Somebody else's problem. Let Timmy, uh, <clears throat> let him live, whatever, let it, let, let it go. That's our tendency. And yet, according to that verse, that'd be sin. That's why I've been emphasizing this. It goes against our cultural tendencies, okay? Now, um, does that mean I should buy a speed radar and set up at my lot on the highway? That right there is a radar getting Josh Holder go by, right? <laughs> 55 miles per hour, he's on 37. But, would it be appropriate then to say, Miss Melissa goes by at, let's say, 61, okay? Should I call up Luke or call up the sheriff? The sheriff Chris. Melissa Holder just drove by my lot. Hot speed limit's 55. She was going 61. I can tell you right where she is. You can go get her. Should I do that? Should I do that, honey? What do you think, Dave? Should I do it? What if it's, what if it's your dad? He's going six miles per hour over. Should I call the sheriff? <laughs> I should have dismissed Melissa. <laughs>
see them suffer, guys. Is that good? No. So that's a part. My other motivation could be, could be pursuing the good and safety of my neighbors. If they're reckless and endangering, right? You see the motivation? What my motivation is will play a big difference. Most of the time it's going to be mixed, okay? But it surely shouldn't be taking pleasure in other people's suffering, okay? We'll make more application of that next week. Now, when it comes to speaking up, what I'm talking about here, informing proper authorities, okay? What I'm talking about. There's two ditches, okay? It's kind of like a road. These are the two ditches, I would argue. Number one is there's the ditch of being the busybody, right? Getting a speed radar and calling the sheriff when anybody goes four miles per hour over, right? Getting in everybody's business, okay? See, that's a busybody, a meddler, we call it, okay? And, and we, we don't want to do that, okay? The other ditch, though, is to be self-centered. Now, the reason I say self-centered is this. Think of that example of Mr. Ben. See, if Mr. Ben, why wouldn't he want to tell the proper authorities that he just saw Timmy and Weston stolen teeth? Who's going to get mad at him? Probably. Timmy. Who wants Timmy mad at him? <laughs> Not me, right? So that's one. Number two is everybody's going to see Ben then. Mr. Ben, everybody's going to look at Ben like he's a snitch. He's a squealer. I mean, who wants to be known as a snitch, as a squealer, as a tattletale? Huh? And then thirdly, he might be worried that, well, not lots of people might be mad at me because people like Timmy, right? So then, so you see why it would be easier then for Ben to say, you know, it's not my problem. Why should I stick my neck out just so Wesley can get his Jeep back or whatever, okay? You see that? And that's what I'm trying to push. Is that our tendency, our tendency is to, not my problem, just not deal with it. Not speak up. That's, our, and that's what I'm really trying to push against. Now, the goal of me pushing against it is not that we go into the other ditch on the other side. Okay? We'll talk about that more next week. But the thing I want you guys to see is and understand is this. Who is responsible for justice in society? You. This is what I want you to understand. You are your brother's keeper. You are. You are your brother's keeper. That's what I'm trying to get us at. So, there's lots of principles I could give, but here's the point, guys. When it comes to speaking up, there are principles. Now, I can't speak, open the Bible and point to one passage to let me. This is just Scott's wisdom, and I'm not saying the first thing you can do is go to the police. Okay? If you see somebody hurting somebody else, okay, uh, you can do something yourself. There might be something there. So there's a lot more principles than I can teach the children. But the point is this, guys. When it comes to speaking up, it's not getting in everybody's business. But there are certain principles we should speak up to. Number one, when you see other people destroying property, right? Think about, think about Weston. Do you think he would want Ben to speak up so he could get his Jeep back? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay? Hurting innocent people, we ought to speak up. Okay? Threatening others' safety, we ought to speak up. And this fourth one, highly subjective, nuisance to society. At what level? Those, but the point is, guys, at times, we need to speak up. Justice demands that God desires us to. So, if you're smart, if you're astute, you'll notice that I did something preachers do a lot. Okay? And that is, Leviticus 5, verse 1 is talking about a public charge to witness, isn't it? But what have I switched it all to? Informing the police, informing proper authorities. You see, they're, they're a little different, aren't they? I did that because I think the principle applies. Okay, but I want you guys to see the Bible commends at times telling proper authorities. And so we need to understand when is it appropriate to tell proper authorities. Listen, to this. this is from Esther. It says, in those days, as Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the threshold, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. A source. I don't know what say. A source. Okay? And this came to the knowledge of Mordecai. So these two guys want to kill the king. Mordecai finds out. What's he going to do? He told it to Queen Esther. And Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. So you see how they're going to proper authorities? Okay? And then notice, when the affair was investigated and found to be so, there's diligent inquiry. We've talked about that. In pursuing justice. 
But when it was found out to be so, the men were both hanged on the gallows. And it was recorded in the book of Chronicles in the presence of the king. And they were recorded. Later on, that recording came up because it was a memorable deed that Mordecai did. So the point I want you guys to see is this, guys. We live in an individualistic society. You know what that means? That means, essentially, we don't really care what goes on to other people. And we don't want to get in other people's business. But the Bible says we are our brother's keeper. There are times we ought to get in other people's business. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Okay? What it's saying is this. The Bible says, what's the whole law fulfilled with? What, how's the whole law summed up? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you're Weston and your Jeep got stolen, would you want somebody to come forward so you could get it back? Absolutely. If you're King Aesaurus and you're about to be killed by two men, would you want Mordecai to step up and let it be known so that you could be saved? Yeah, see, that's what we're talking about, guys. So now let's bring it down to your level. Because we're talking mostly more for adults. But here's the thing. If you're talking about informing proper authorities, we're talking about tattletale. How many of you guys have ever tattled on somebody else? I think everybody. So I figured this is super critical. So let me ask you this, guys. Can you tattletale to the glory of God? We're not going to end. We're going to end with a question. You guys can talk to your parents. Parents, I'd encourage you to talk to your kids. And next week, we'll look at this. The two questions. Number one, if it's good, right, and just for adults to inform proper authorities of wrongdoing, does that mean God wants you to be a tattletale? Huh? You don't have to answer now, but you're going to have to answer next week. And secondly, if it's yes, what are the biblical principles that should guide tattletale? Huh? If God wants us to, how do we do it to the glory of God? So let's pray and ask God to give us grace that we would think through these things and understand and live our lives for His glory. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank You again for uh, Your Word, that it's a light to our path. That even though we live in such a dark world and a confused world and a world that uh, seeks justice while pursuing injustice and calling it justice, Lord, help us uh, to keep our minds uh, eyes focused upon you so that we would truly honor and glorify you in our lives. So help us to that end, we ask. We thank you for your word, your guidance. Thank you most of all for the forgiveness of sins in Christ. Help us to love and trust and to walk obediently with him. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.